The next texture we're going to do, this is probably, I say, is one of the most popular textures. When you go to shows or you're out and about looking at watercolor, you will notice a lot of, a lot of people use salt. What kind of salt can you use? Any type of salt. Sea salt, table salt, culture salt, rock salt, margarita salt, salt that you make ice cream with, the big, big chunks. But each salt is going to have a little different effect on how it reacts to the pigments and also what pigments you're using. So what happens is the crystals will start soaking up. It starts soaking it up and pulls the color away from the little salt that, has, uh, that you've put down. So it gets this real interesting texture. When would you use this? People will use it for snow. They'll use it for in abstracts. They'll put it in trees. They put it on rocks. They can just sprinkle it down to just get an interesting texture in the background. So really fun texture. Now, do all pigments react the same with salt? No, I have some of my students that get a little disappointed and go, oh, my salt didn't react. It didn't happen. Well, each pigment is a little different. I can tell you, though, of for sure good two pigments that work with salt going to do that for the demo is rose matter and cobalt blue. But timing is a big issue. People will wait too long and it dries too much or they will do it too quickly and it doesn't have the reaction as well. Anything in life is about timing, right? Same with watercolor. You've got to be on top of it and pay attention to your water. So I just put that down and it's opening up the fibers of the paper and <clears throat> you kind of want to see that the sheen is just starting to go away and that is the right time to put my salt. It's like I say don't dump it on. Take a pinch of it. It's like salting your salad. Just pinch it and just put it down. You have to let it dry completely. It's starting to react. It does take a little bit of time, but you have to let it dry completely before you brush it off. So we're going to move on to the water blossom. I'm going to teach you to embrace your blooms a little bit. Blooms, again, is another timing issue. It doesn't always work out uh, you don't have total control of how they're going to look, but it's putting the color down and then you're going to drop water on it and it's going to push the paint away because it's, I call it the dangerous time when it reacts with the water when it's starting to dry. So let's get our palette cleaned up a little bit and we're going to do water blossoms. Coming in, and I'm just going to come in. Hmm, I never know what color I. It's fun just to do different colors on this exercise. Play around with all your wonderful colors that you have. I'm using cerulean, which is a a little more opaque color. I'm just putting that down, covering my square. And I'm going to put some burnt sienna down. Still has a sheen to it. So I have to wait till that starts drying a little bit. So this one is very time sensitive to how it reacts. It's a little overcast today. Your weather is always going to play a very important factor on how your paint is drying. When it's really humid, and a lot of moisture in the air, things will dry slower. If it's really a hot day, things will dry faster. So it does make a difference 
where you live and what's happening with the weather with your paints. So this is still a little too wet in there, I can tell. But that area looks like it's starting to set up. I can come in and touch it. And it pushes it out. So it starts pushing it out in a puddle. So it's, a, it's an interesting texture. It's just a little too wet for me to go in and do this. I'm getting a little impatient. You can also take your fingers and come in and go like this. And you can also sometimes take a spray bottle and give it a little spray, but you're seeing it kind of blossom and bloom. You may have to come back to that one. But we're going to move on to the white candle. Okay, white candle is a great thing to have with your art supplies. Just go to the store and I cut them up by a normal size candle and just cut them up and carry them with you. When you put candle down, it, you can't see where you put it down. It's a fun resist. You can use other colored candles as well. If you push down very, very hard and do a very smooth, even application of it, it will completely block out all of the color. Can't see where you've done it, but once you put down the paint, you will see the resist. Candle is another very popular technique for a texture. Okay, that's where I put it down very, very thick. If you don't press hard enough, you won't get a good resist. Candle is something that always stays on and you cannot take it off. So it would be something that you would put down first before you paint. So that's candle and you can use different colored candles as well. So that is a fun Technique, when would you use candle? You can use it for white caps in the ocean, for white areas, it, 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 wherever you would like to save a white. You could do it on the fruit where the light's hitting. You could do it, I do it in abstracts. Any, any type of place where you'd like to keep that to resist. Another very popular texture. Let me come back. I'm going to come back and just hit that with water and getting a, an interesting kind of marbling texture. It's not as happening as much as I would like it. It's just not drying too fast today. So that is it on those three textures. I'd like you to go try salt and water blooms and a white candle.